All right, then we'll resume. And we are resuming on item number 15, 79 Somerset Avenue. On this application, the panel has before it the applicant's submit submission, plus correspondence from Eddie Perez, the applicant, waiving pre-circulation requirements. And we have a report from Engineering and Construction. Moderator, do we have the... <laughs> Hello, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman and Committee members. My name is Eddie Perez. I'm here on behalf of the owners and or the designers. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Just stand by for a moment, please, while I ask the panel members what they'd like to do. Panel, would you like a presentation on this application, or do you have any questions for the agent? I have one question. Please. Um, I couldn't see on the drawings where the penetration of the angular plane was. Could you uh, give us some insight into that? Penetration is uh, going on to that. Uh, Mr. Perez, you'll need to speak up a little bit, please. We've lost your, your voice. It's, it's to the point where it's that oval shape at the back. It's only in that little portion where the angle is. Like a little uh, nook for that portion there. Which you can see on the site plan on the table as well. And it, it, uh, everything is existing, we're just building on top. The laneway access is only one meter right now, so we're not asking for any existing. It's what's existing, we're putting stuff in, uh, on top of the existing garage. And then for the width of it, it's existing 10 meters. So that's why we have the 10 meter variance as well. The variances are very minor in nature in keeping with the area. Um, Chair, just, just if I might, um, Usually when we see a laneway suite, uh, we, we sometimes get a fair amount of interest from uh, uh, surrounding neighbors. I noticed there are, there's no correspondence. Have you had a chance and have you discussed this application with your neighbors? Mr. Perez, you'll need to speak up please again. The neighbors spoke to the neighbors on, each, on either side of it. Okay. I didn't know. questions if there are no further questions then I shall look to panel for a motion please Uh, well, no one else is. Uh, I'll. Uh, I'm happy to move a motion. I, I again. I thought this one was fairly straightforward. It's a second story over an existing uh, garage. The same footprint, not changing the footprint at all. And, um, it appears there is no concern from uh, surrounding or adjacent neighbors. I thought the design was fine. I thought the the um, the variances in total were overall fairly uh, minor and. Uh, um, I, I think this is a reasonable proposal, and um, I'm fully prepared to move a motion to uh, approve this um, application subject to uh, the conditions set out in the uh, engineering staff's uh, correspondence. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Ms. Hayes. 
It is moved and seconded to approve subject to engineering. All those in favor, show of hands. And the motion is carried unanimously. The application is approved subject to engineering staff report. And the panel moves on to item number 16. Five Hawthorne Avenue. On this application, we have applicants' materials before us, and we have correspondence in support from uh, actually two letters of support from Nine Hawthorne Avenue. So, from Nine Hawthorne, two letters of support. Moderator, do we have the applicant or the agent with us? Mr. Chair. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Do we do hear you? Please state your name. Egidio Giacomini. Very good. Okay. Sure. Um, good afternoon, uh, Chair and uh, members. My name is Egidio Giacomini, and I'm the agent for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dackley. Okay. Just We're just proposing a uh, rear addition, two-story addition. It's approximately 5.88 by uh, 4.26 meters long. Variances of one and two. Um, Re Mr. regarding the building length, Mr. what's Giacomini? required is 17 and 19 meters. We are proposing... Mr. Giacomini? Yep. Ja Mr. Giacomini, just stand by for a second. Um, I'm going to speak sure. with... I'm going to check with the panel members to determine from them whether they'd like a presentation or perhaps they just have a question or two for you. I, I don't okay, know. sure. You, you have four minor var four variance requests here. Panel members, any questions okay. of the uh, agent? Um, Chair, I'll just, I, I think he was going to start talking about, and I would uh, appreciate hearing his perspective, uh, just the uh, length um, of the uh, overall building now with the addition. Uh, just, it, it looks like from uh, the adjoining and adjacent neighbors that uh, the length wouldn't be out inconsistent with some of the developments that have happened in that neighborhood, and I just wondered whether he could speak to that. Yeah, that's right. Uh there's about uh, 1.2 meters less than uh, the adjacent neighbor on number three, Hawthorne. So we're 1.2 meters less. That's fine, thank you. Is anyone ready for a motion on this application? Sure, I'll start. Um, I think that what's being requested is minor. The um, depth and length variances as submitted in this part of the materials suggest that the neighbor um, is slightly deeper, although their depth is only one story. This is for two stories. Uh, I still believe that what's being proposed is indeed minor and is not out of character uh, for what exists in the neighborhood. And if my colleagues have no further comments, that would be my motion to approve the application with no conditions. Second to that. Second by Mr. Bayer. Okay. It is moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor? And it is, motion is carried unanimously and the application is approved without condition. The panel moves along to item number 17. 224 Ellis Avenue. On this application we are dealing with the material submitted by the applicant there's a topographic overlay from Graham Barrett, the agent, and there are pre other presentation materials received on the 25th of May. There is a report from PRCA. And moderator, on 17, do we have the agent with us? Mr. Chair, we have 
Graham Barrett. Graham, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead. Good afternoon, committee members, Mr. Chair, staff. Good afternoon. Um, that just, I'm going to ask panel members if they have any questions for you. Panel, with your presentation, questions? Hearing any questions okay. or, or request for presentation on panel? Is are we ready to move to a motion? Uh, sure, Chair. I'll, uh, I'll I'll be happy to start. Um, I looked at this application. I thought it was uh, actually quite an excellent design. Um, I think the variances uh, are uh, comparatively uh, minor. Uh, just this is, I know this stretch of Ellis, uh, almost all the homes that are along that side of the bus are being redeveloped. Um, it backs on to uh, a park, so there's no impact, I don't believe, on anyone in behind. Uh, I can totally appreciate why the design is oriented in a way to take advantage of that. Um, I thought it was fairly straightforward. Uh, again, TRCA has no issues with respect to the ravine. So I'm prepared, uh, if my colleagues don't have any uh, further comments, I'm happy to uh, move a motion to uh, approve this application. Thanks for that. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Byatt. It is moved and seconded to approve. Those in favor, show of hands. Motion is carried. The application is approved. Panel moves to number 18. 135 Crescent Road. We're dealing with the applicant's materials here and Decision number A738 00TO, which affects the subject property. And we do have the email correspondence from Heritage Preservation or City Planning. And we have one speaker registered. Mr. Chair, we have the agent register. We also have one other speaker uh, registered. Thanks, moderator. Okay. Yes. Is the agent with us? Uh, we do. Sean Galbraith, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Sean Galbraith. I'm a planner here on behalf of the application. Thank you very much. Um, we'll ask you to, uh, to make your presentation to the panel, please. You have five minutes. Please proceed. Thank you very much. The application is, I think, fairly straightforward. It seeks to uh, uh, create a new one-story rear addition uh, that replaces uh, what is currently a uh, sort of an attached shed um, and a rear deck. There'll be no, there won't be a new rear deck. Um, the addition is 118 square feet in size, and is, it actually projects uh, less into the rear yard than the shed plus uh, deck does by about 1.1 uh, meters. Um, there's also a new garage that is proposed, but no variances are triggered by the garage. So the only variance is the building depth, um, and that's for the again the one-story rear addition. Um, if the the technician is cycling through the plans. Um, if he or she uh, goes to, I believe, uh, A3.2, um, you can see a side elevation of the proposal. Sorry, uh, uh, well, you're at 1.2. I could point out the, um, the existing sort of shed structure and the rear deck if that would be a benefit. There we go. Um, so you can see the outline of the house at the north 
northwest corner you can see a kind of l shaped it says unheated it's a sort of a it's a shed sort of attached to the to the house uh, just north of the outside uh, rear deck the uh, rear addition will basically get rid of that shed and bring that space and portion of the uh, rear deck space in internal to the building um, at page a 2.2 you can see the difference next one that's the basement if you could go to the next page please there you go thank you um, so it, it squares off the rear of the building and it's a again a one-story addition it doesn't project into the into to the rear um, beyond the existing deck and shed structure um, and if you go to a 3.2 you can see the side elevation thank you very much um, on the left side, um, you can see the, again, you can see the rear addition out the back. Um, in my opinion, it's a, it's a very small um, and reasonable addition. The variance is, is absolutely in keeping with uh, variances that have been approved in the neighborhood. It's actually one of the smaller ones for building depth and is below the average that has been approved. And I don't believe that Heritage or Planning have any concerns with the application. Happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go on to the registered speakers and hear from them. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Hello? Yes, yeah, we hear you. State your name, please. So my name is Paul Mayer. I am the owner to the north of 135 Crescent Road. I'm at 121 Crescent Road. Thank you. You have five minutes to, uh, to uh, speak with the panel to present. Go ahead, please. Okay. Hopefully this will be shorter than five minutes. Um, I guess our concern is that uh, 20 years ago or so, the coach house in the back of 135 Crescent Road was a garage. Uh, there was an application to turn it into a coach house and uh, it became one. Um, our concern is that if there's an addition put onto the, the main house at 135, if the existing coach house is to remain, um, where are we with the density if we're adding a new garage? So uh, I think it's uncharacteristic in a neighborhood to have three dwellings on one property. We would also have concerns uh, about the soft landscaping where the new garage is proposed uh, would eliminate quite a bit of the existing landscaping. Uh, and uh, I think with regards to the um, the variance on the 19 meters to the 22.31. Uh, we would be concerned that uh, if that is permitted along with the garage and, uh, and as well with the uh, coach house remaining, uh, that seems to be a lot for, for being on one property. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions for this speaker panel? Thank you for those comments. We'll go back now to the applicant to allow him to address these matters. Um, applicant, um, if you could address whether or not the result of your proposal will be that there are three separate structures on the property. We need to know that. And yes, that there will be. Sorry to interrupt. And yes, there will be three the separate structures. There'll be the house. Apologies. Okay. Um, there'll there'll be three, three separate structures, but two dwellings. The existing uh, coach house in the back, uh, and then the main house. Um, the garage is just a garage. 
um, and there's no landscaping variance um, required or triggered by the proposal. Thank you. And the, the other issue was uh, the other issue was was a comment that the, the variance you're asking for to go to 22.31 um, in the estimate of your neighbor is resulting in a over intensification, overbuild um, situation on the property. How do you respond to that? So I would say that the the average that has been approved in the neighborhood. Um, is 24.26. Um, building depth variances are uh, quite common in this neighborhood um, with over see, 25 of them approved in the last decade. Um, and that's just the ones approved under the new bylaw. There are other ones approved under the, the old bylaw that were even bigger. Um, the average that has been approved just on, on Crescent itself is 23.61, which is larger than is being proposed here. Um, and again, this is only a one-story rear addition. Um, it doesn't generate anything when what I would consider to be impacts of shadow or overlook. Um, and it's replacing an existing shed and, and deck with some habitable space that's only 188 square feet in size. Okay. Any questions of the applicant panel members? Right, go ahead. Uh, uh, just a quick question. The garage, is there an existing garage that is being replaced or is this going to be completely new? This is a new garage. And again, that Has doesn't trigger any variances itself. So there's been no, no issue of parking previously. It looks like there's a driveway close to the south side. Correct. It's basically a, a large outdoor. Okay. Yes, there's a, there's a driveway that runs into a back sort of um, paver parking area, some of okay. which will now be enclosed in a garage. Thank you. You're welcome. Some of it will be converted to soft landscaping as well. Questions, panel of the applicants. If there aren't any, then uh, I would look to panel for a motion, please. Mr. Chair, uh, I'm quite uh, happy to move uh, forward with the motion to accept the application as is. Um, with no conditions attached. I don't believe there are any other conditions with regard to this property. Okay, motion there. Is there a second to that motion? Second by Mr. Clay. It is moved and seconded to approve the application without condition. All those in favor, show of hands, please. And the motion is carried unanimously. The application is approved. The panel moves on to item number 19, 456 Armadale Avenue. On this application, we do have before us the applicant's materials, the covering letter from the applicant, plus the presentation materials from the applicant. There is substantial correspondence both in support and in opposition. In support we have correspondence from 688 Windermere, uh, 97 Running Me, 215 Fort York Boulevard, 467 Beresford, from Brewer West Village, from Crawford Street, 613, 150 Fairview Mall Drive. There are five letters of support from Owners and occupants. Additionally, additionally, from Q80 Dury, 495 Armadale, 601 Annette, and 682 Windermere. There is also significant opposition correspondence from 464 Armadale, 
457, 453, 460, 476, 466. All these are Armadale addresses. 455, another from 455. 454, 459, and 401. So, moderator. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have Bernard Watt, the agent registered to speak on behalf of the application. We also had seven other people registered to speak on to the application. One of them canceled their registration, and the other, despite calling and emailing, we can't get a hold of, so we're left with five. I beg your pardon. The other? We're left with five. We're left with five. Okay, so we have the agent plus five speakers Correct. in opposition. Yes, that's right. Okay. And Bernard Watt is the agent. If you've been unmuted, you can go ahead. Good afternoon, agent. Hello. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me well? We hear you very well. Please state your name. Okay. Uh, my name is Bernard Watt. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, this application is for a two-story addition to an existing original one-story brick bungalow. The retained basement, could we have the, excuse me, could we have the colored site plan and colored elevation that were submitted later? Um, the retained basement and ground floor are converted each into a residential rental unit. A new second and third floor become each a residential rental unit for a total of four two-bedroom units, each having its own private entrance from the new front porch. The rental fourplex, that's perfect. Rental fourplex is permitted use under the Sony bylaw and official plan. They are found in residential streets from the beaches to the annex, and like the two recently completed ones at the junction, are a desirable option for living in the city. This building will provide accommodation for young couples and seniors that needing to downsize will not be able to remain in the neighborhood. Three parking spaces are provided at the rear with access from a lane shared with mixed-use buildings on Jane Street. The basement unit will rent without parking. Public transportation is available on Jane and Annette Streets with subway, local shopping, and services close by. A new tree and landscaping will be planted on the public boulevard. A, a rear garden will provide play area for children and an enclosed garbage storage shed. Circulation of this application received no revision requests from planning, urban forestry, traffic, or engineering services. This block of Armadale consists mostly of two-story semis on the east side and two-story detached houses on the west side. There are three-story houses at 492 and 478, while 492 and 432 Armadale provide rental units. Others provide basement apartments with separate entrances. Will this fourplex set a precedent? 456 and the neighbor 454 are the only 10 meter wide lots and also the only bungalows. A potential fourplex requires both a wider lot and an underbuilt lot. These two conditions are not met by any other property on the street. Why not a triplex instead? The fourth unit increases the rental income by 27%. Without it, the project is not viable given the current houses on the street and the values of construction costs. There are four variances. The height variance, the elevation please, um, is half a meter or an increase of 5% over the permitted 10 meters. This minor variance results from the retaining of the existing ground floor, currently at 1.2 meters in height. There are no main wall height variances, and the third floor slopes to the front and rear, resulting in minimal sightline obstruction and shadows cast. The FSI variance of 1.03 times lot is required to meet the viability of the project. There are no variances to front and rear yard setbacks, or building depth. Except for the two bungalows, all the houses on the street have excess FSI over 0.6 permitted. 
Number 42 has 1.16. Number 459, just across the street, has 1.05. This proposal is located at the edge of a R district. All you have to do is cross the real lane to find yourself in a 2.5 SFI, FSI district. The side yard variance is due to existing conditions. A fourplex with sidewall windows must be 1.2 meters from the property line. However, if the sidewall has no windows, it can be at 0.45 meters. The upper addition has no windows and sits over the existing wall at 0.33 meters. Thus, the minor variance is actually five inches, the distance between the 0.45 permitted setback and the 0.33 of the current setback. Also, the neighbor's house was originally built with a 0.18 uh, meter setback and is over two and a half stories following the usual pattern on the street of very tight on one side and driveway on the other side. Mr. The parking Water, variance results Mr. from- Mr. Water, I'll ask I'm you- I'm almost done. I'll ask you to make your summary, please. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Parking variance results from a lot dimension. A fourth car could fit, but three cars provide better maneuverability and space for bicycle parking along the side fences. This proposal removes its parking needs entirely away from the street. As, for the, as of last Friday, City of Toronto confirmed that there is permit parking available in the area. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, let us proceed to our first registered speaker. Jason Kim, you've been unmuted, you can go ahead. Good afternoon, Mr. Kim. Jason Kim, you can go ahead, you've been unmuted. Jason, I'm not sure if you can hear us, we can't hear you, you at all. Oh, sorry, my apologies, sorry okay. I started talking. My apologies, sorry. We okay, you, so uh, my name is Jason Kim. I live on 453 Armadale, which is directly across the street from the proposed building. So I have a concern with the impact of this large block building with essentially a flat roof impacting the look and feel of the neighborhood surrounding the property. Um, I mean, without putting too fine a point on it, I think we're essentially putting a standard apartment building in the middle of a residential neighborhood. And all the other houses are 100 year homes that are occupied by families and retire, uh, retirees that have a consistent look and feel. There are no similar looking houses that are multi-unit on this entire block of uh, Armadale. And I don't think there's a mention of all the petitions uh, against this development, but uh, we've uh, there's multiple uh, petitions that have been recorded, including one 73 person in-person signature. There's been a web petition that's well over 280 petitions, sorry, signatories. Uh, so, and uh, we, we actually have another one that I think is like 24 direct neighbors that are all in opposition to this. So there seems to be some consensus agreement with my statement. Uh, my feeling is that density needs to be appropriate and in the proper place. Uh, and in my view, this building is a major variance to the, all the housing stock in the neighborhood. And if you, if you listen to the, uh, to the agent that was speaking, the only way that this can be uh, built is by approving variances that significantly deal, uh, that significantly results in a um, in a building that deviates from the maximum floor space in uh, index, and they're all designed to cram uh, as much uh, possible space to actually make it feasible. And they said that you know if, if all these were done, the building would not even be feasible. So if if this feasibility is an issue, I think they should be going at it from a zoning perspective as opposed to looking for all these variances. Um, I don't know whether uh, Helen's uh, relatives are going to be talking, but one thing I have been asked to talk about is the impact of Helen, who's a retiree who lives on 458, which is to the north of that building. Um, she uh, will obviously have a wall that goes three stories up um, that will impact uh, her single window uh, that, uh, that looks out uh, over uh, the building currently. Um, and there's also, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of existing homes that have such a separation, but my argument is why would we approve a variance to allow it proactively? I think it's very difficult to uh, do it uh, retroactively. Um, and as well, I think there's a concern uh, on her part around the fact that there's going to be two balconies gonna, that are going to be overlooking her backyard, which is going to impact her uh, enjoyment of her gardens. 
Um, so I, I'll speak for myself as well. Uh, my neighbor, Michael, who, who's the other side of my uh, semi, um, it, we, we have a concern to the third floor that's gonna be added to this building. We'll have the ability to look directly into uh, our bedroom windows, which are large picture windows. Um, right now, there is no line of sight to all the other houses in, uh, in, our, um, in our neighborhood towards uh, our, our window. And uh, we, um, we're obviously gonna have to have our curtains drawn pretty much the whole time, which I think will impact our, our enjoyment and view, as well as the light coming into our, um, into our building. So um, I think another issue that we anticipate is the trash bins for four units. Um, there's really no way that four, essentially 12 trash bins can be put in the front of the building. Um, I don't know whether there's a plan for putting in the back, but we're just concerned about the clutter and the sort of the eyesore that's gonna result from that. Uh, in summary, I think that we bought in the neighborhood because we love Burris Village and its look and feel. And we think that this alien building that's gonna be put in the middle of our street will be a major variance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Panel, questions for the speaker? Moderator, next speaker. Tim McDougall, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, committee. Are you able to hear me? We hear you well, Mr. McDougall. Please carry Thank on. Thank you. Thanks for hearing me. I am a resident at 461 Armadale, and I just wanted to state my objection to this development proposal because I don't believe it to be a minor variance. I believe the proposal is too large for the lot and is too important to be considered minor. I think it will set a precedent for the neighborhood and allow more developments like this if allowed to proceed. Uh, I think that the city wishes for this type of development, they should probably uh, rezone as opposed to having us come to this uh, committee for variances. And I don't believe it'll be desirable from a public interest perspective. The majority of neighbors and proposed, uh, around the proposed development have expressed opposition to it. Uh, my letter of objection, I collected 34 signatures representing 28 households within the immediate vicinity of this development. I would also uh, like to rebut uh, the application in regards to 492 Armadale. 492 Armadale um, is a three-story, but it is, does have sloped roofs. It looks more like a two and a half. It also only has one adjacent neighbor. It is beside a laneway. And the neighbor on the other side, they have about a meter between the houses. It also is located at the end of the street, only two houses south of Annette, which has a di different feel where you will find uh, rental units and uh, a different structure of building. So I don't think it's quite applicable to the middle of the street. And as well, I would like to address uh, the square foot index for 459 Armadale, which is my neighbor. I will say that that increase of a square foot index does impact me. It does cut off line of sight in the back of my yard. It also uh, reduces the amount of green space that is available for uh, water absorption and water runoff, as well as reducing habitat for birds, insects, and animals. And I think that that will also be the case uh, for this proposed development with the parking lot taking up a large chunk of the backyard. Uh, now, the presenter also mentioned the 2.5 square foot index on Jane Street, which sounds like Jane would be a great place for a development of this kind. And uh, that's, there's a reason why I believe the rest of us chose to live on Armadale and not Jane. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments and questions. Okay then, moderator. Next speaker, please. Yep, Kalila and Michael Fazio, you're been unmuted, you can go ahead. Oh, thank you very much, and good afternoon. Uh, Michael, Michael and Khalil Fazio, 466 Armadale. Uh, first of all, thank you to this committee to, to allow us to voice our concerns and objections to this development. Uh, I'm not gonna waste the committee's time today by reciting the letter that's already been registered, but the question I ask today is, is this development and variance request minor, and is it necessary? And the answer for us is no. Uh, this is not a minor issue, and as, uh, as my other neighbors expressed, this is a rezoning issue. The Lawson and Babiak team are going to argue that this supports intensification and gentle density. The question again is, is the design proposal and the variance necessary? Not looking to stop the development, 
uh, we actually we actually are, are not opposed to it. Development or to make beautify the, the neighborhood, but is this design and the variance necessary? Uh, and this development really doesn't fit quite literally into our community and on our street. Let's be clear, intensification or density doesn't mean a four unit dwelling, and this does not supersede zoning or bylaws uh, in place to protect established communities such as ours. Today I already struggled to find parking on the street, not easy with three little ones, having to sometimes park well past my block, not uh, due just to residents, but also guests of residents. What happens in the case of residents of the, this proposed building owning two cars? The proposed development does not provide enough parking for four units. Assuming one unit's occupant doesn't have a vehicle is not a risk we should consider or it's, it's, um, it's speculative at best. Residents on Arbyville have, in, have invested and put their hard earned money, sweat dollars into this community. And these developers are here to maximize their own gains. They can achieve the development without the variances and we understand the likelihood that this property would be developed again, but built, but built within reason and the guidelines and the consideration uh, for the neighbors that have vested interest in supporting this community. This is a strong and vibrant community. The Babiak real estate team know this firsthand. They sell and represent buyers here in this market. We are their market. Let me read a recent posting from the Babiak real estate team and their marketing to sell million dollar homes in this area. May 19th, coming soon. 102 Rivercrest Road. Welcome to this exceptionally elegant and spacious four bedroom old mill home with rare wide private drive, perfectly situated on a desirable and tranquil family friendly street. May 5th, coming soon. 622 Windermere Avenue. Quintessential three bedroom detached Bloor West Village family home featuring elegant original character and tasteful updates. In the original listing of 456 Armadale, only a few months ago, in which the Babiak team was the listing agent, indicated live, reno, or build. And the build at the end of the listing was to build your dream home. A four unit monster is not a dream home in my book. In addition to the density argument, Blossom and Babiak are also wanting to argue development feasibility. As a businessman, uh, you know, I can appreciate anyone trying to maximize their profits on a property, but not at the expense of the citizens, neighbors, and residents of this area. Blossom and Babiak are here for themselves and to maximize profit, not to represent, not one representative came around to all the neighbors who received the variance request to discuss their de uh, development plans. Build, but build within your limit and don't infringe upon the neighborhood. Again, uh, the question I ask is, is this necessary and is this minor? The answer is no. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's see if there are questions. Now? Okay, hearing none, we'll go to the next speaker moderator. Uh, Witold Dualtokowski, you can unmute, you can go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, good morning. Vito uh, Dzewoltowski, Greenfield, 435 Armadale Avenue. Good day. Um, please, uh, please go ahead and, and uh, you have five minutes to make your presentation. I'll, I'll try to make it uh, briefer than uh, five minutes uh, once again. It, it will probably be to an extent a rehashing of the arguments already heard. But just to, just to focus on the variance itself, uh, if we look at uh, floor space variance from uh, 195.94 allowed to uh, the requested 336.93, let's say that's a 72 percent uh, excess of what's allowed. Uh, if we look at uh, something as simple as parking spaces, that's uh, three parking spaces of, of the uh, of the allowed or required four. Um, even if we were to look at the height variance of uh, effectively only five per percent. Uh, that's uh, that you know that that could be viewed as minor, but uh, but not uh, not given the fact that this will now be a uh, flat roof, uh, obviously affecting the, uh, the the massing of the structure. Uh, in, in summary, to this, these are not once again minor variances. Uh, this is a major departure from the uh, character of this neighborhood and from what was uh, intended in the zoning. Um, 
the comparisons by the agent uh, to uh, Jane Street unit and to uh, 492 Armadale, uh, I dare say bear hallmarks of this disingenuity, because once again, the fact that we are next to a, about, you know, a block away from a major thoroughfare uh, does not mean that we should uh, enjoy or suffer the same zoning as that thoroughfare. Uh, and once again, 492 Armadale, a bit of a special case. They only have one uh, neighbor directly abutting their property. Uh, they have uh, laneways on two sides of their property and then Armadale Avenue on the third side. Um, add to that the fact that 492, as uh, somebody has already mentioned, is a, uh, is a sloped roof and not a flat roof. Um, it's not uh, what is being proposed is just simply not in uh, not in line with the uh, not keeping with the uh, architectural character of the neighborhood. Um, it will be a major imposition, uh, even though I'm not a direct neighbor to that property. Um, I, I can see that it will be a major imposition on the immediate neighbors uh, in terms of their enjoyment, their privacy. Um, uh, in short, um, I am opposed uh, to this uh, to this variance, uh, and this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Let me ask you this: um, you know, day to day, if approved, how would how would this um, development affect you and and uh, and those that live with you? Very well. It, it would most likely just from the perspective of parking and and and. Let, let's clarify, uh, even though I, I appreciate the agent's explanation that uh, there is sufficient public transit uh, around, uh, the fact of the matter is that most residents in the area do have at least one car, uh, so we can, we can safely expect that, uh, that whoever were to reside, that the three families that were, sorry, the four families that, that were to reside uh, at this uh, at 456 Armadale would probably have four cars. So that would further limit uh, availability of street parking, uh, even if not uh, for us as residents, then for instance, for our guests, uh, contractors and so on. Um, it would, uh, I, I, I totally agree with the uh, with one of my precursors comments about uh, garbage bins. Um, you know, <laughs> we don't just put out one bin, uh, we at times put out three or more bins when, when for instance, garden waste, uh, uh, becomes part of the uh, part of the garbage day. Uh, I, I can't imagine how that would be handled on a sidewalk that's already difficult to pass uh, to actually navigate uh, on a garbage day. Um, okay, that's probably my immediate thoughts on this. I appreciate it. Thanks for your call, moderator. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Our last uh, our last registered speaker, James Anderson. You've been unmuted. You can go ahead. This is, um, could you state your name, please? Is this um, Dr. Anderson? James Anderson of 454 Armadillo Avenue, where I live with my parents, who are the owner. And um, we've lived there for 80 years, and over 80 years, and three generations. Thank you very much. I'm just waiting for Yeah, you can go back to page four of it. Uh, I'll just tell you where to stop. Um, there, perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, so we've lived here for 80 years, and this has uh, been, of course, a family neighborhood with a certain style. And as you can look at, just looking at these two homes right next to each other, they're two bungalows, not one, one and a half stories, bungalows that are adjacent to each other. and it's gives you a look at what things would have looked like on the street a hundred years ago, which would be a good thing to preserve. Now, the garbage has been addressed a little bit, but I'd like to mention that where would this garbage be stored? Like, would it be in the backyard? And if so, it would have to go up and down the driveway. And this is a mutual driveway. It doesn't belong to either. It's shared. And 
there'd be a lot of noise and a lot of garbage and people and inevitably with four times as much going down the down the driveway, inevitably someone would come out and making that mess. So um, someone would have to be responsible and it'd be more cumbersome even in the winter. Um, and my second point, if you go to the next page, okay, you can see that there's very large, especially compared to our home, a 454 Armadale Avenue, that it would cut off any light that we would see on that side. And also notice that there are three balconies and many windows that would be looking directly into our backyard. So at any time, we could imagine all these windows would be looking into our backyard. Furthermore, if you go to the next page, there are 14 banks of windows facing our house. That's 14. So that means we could be looking at the top of our house, into our house, into the shared driveway, into the backyard, into the front yard. We would have absolutely no privacy. We would be the proverbial fish in a bowl for all intents and purposes. We would not even be able to open our curtains because we know we'll be viewed by this large, large home. Okay. And then on my next point, if you look at the garage, right, uh, go to the next one. Um, yeah, see right there? So there's our garage on the left. And it's been like this for decades and decades. It's an old style garage that has to open up all the way in order for our car to be able to park inside. Furthermore, um, the garage on the right is in the plan set to be demolished. So that means that this could be a problem for our garage because it could be injured when they're taking it down. Furthermore, there's a proposed fence that would get in the way of us opening our garage. This is where we park our car. It's where we've always parked our car. And we need to be able to garage fully, which has never been an issue in 80 years. Also, we only don't have a back door. We only have a side door. We need to make sure that our side door is unimpeded at all times because of safety and any other concerns that could come up. We need that to be open. And furthermore, with this proposed fence, which doesn't go all the way to the end, uh, based on the picture we saw um, earlier, it, that means that we can expect there to be people walking through all the time. But then there's no barrier between our backyard and that gap in the fence, which means that we would need increased security. People could have uh, pets that are temperamental. It happens. And they could be doing their business on our lawn, or it could be a danger to us, which would make living much, much more difficult. Um, my next point is um, landscaping, if you go down. Uh, down one more. Uh, yeah. yeah, so you can see that the landscape is going to change completely, which we need assurance that water is not going to pour off into the laneway, into the neighbor's yard, into our yard, because this could be a big problem, especially in the winter, and with things so close together. I should point out that our driveway is only eight feet wide, and if that's the case, it could cause a lot more difficulty with all this and maneuvering our car to get into the garage. So. And there is a drain that is there, but the drain doesn't work. It hasn't worked in decades. And so there's nowhere for the water to go, so they would have to plan this in advance. Um, and just on the driveway point, I would say that anything that's put on the side, like a larger, larger hydrometer or a larger map, would get in the way of already this narrow driveway to get our car into the garage. Um, next, I'd like to go down one more. Uh, one more. Thank you. So, so this is the laneway, and which is already very narrow. It's a two-way laneway, but only has room for one car to go in one direction, with three new parking spots that you can expect cars to be going in and out at all hours. They could be going up and up the laneway in one direction, and another car could be going the other way. This causes a lot of danger, which has to be, be accounted for. In addition, it would snow and ice. This would make it much more difficult to drive through. Um, I'd like to also just uh, then mention that we have uh, several testimonials of people who've lived in the home over the generations, people who've lived in the condition of 73 signatures, uh, people that don't want this development to go in, that doesn't fit in the, neighbor, in the neighborhood at all, and, and that, uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to yeah, just man, man, go Mr. back uh, to the... Mr. Anderson, pardon? I'm sorry, yeah. Dr. Yes, uh, I must. I must stop you now. You you have gone beyond your time, but um, okay. we do have. Some, I do have some questions for you. My panel m member colleagues may as well. 
Okay, so okay, thank you. You are you are directly next door. Yes. And you share a mutual drive with this property. Yes. Okay, so um, tell me the, the the current situation there. Uh, right now, it's a bungalow. Is it is it occupied by? I'm not asking who occupies it. I'm not asking uh, is it is it one dwelling or is it is, are there two dwellings there? It's oh, one dwelling. It's one dwelling now. Yes. So this is going to take it from one dwelling next door on your mutual drive to four. Yes. Okay. Can you tell me what the impact, you've already touched on this, but, but generally speaking, what will the impact of that be on you and, and those that live with you uh, day by day? Well, you can not even imagine. Now my life is going to change completely as well as my parents were very elderly and I love with all my heart, well, with all my heart to keep so many people walking down all the time, and I, I don't think they plan to take any vehicles down there. But maybe there is the occasional vehicle that goes down there, and now and then. And then there's animals that could be walking because people have pets. I love pets, but you know you have different people moving in and out, different pets. There could be trouble. There's no barrier between us because it's mutual. There's no walls that protect us. So our security is in, in danger as well as uh, the big life as a peaceful living. Uh, being down on in the backyard, just sitting outside. I know that there's four places that could be looking at us at any moment. Thank you. Any other questions for the uh, the speaker panel? Okay, then. Um, thank you, speaker. We're going to return now to the agent and ask the agent to address um, the issues uh, raised by the speakers. And the, the could I go back the, to the... Excuse me. Could I go back to the site plan and the front elevator? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, uh, if I may, to, uh, to address some of the issues that people have been, been raising. Um, you know, there's a concern that it, this is basically apartment building being introduced into the middle of a very what is very much a residential district that it's not in keeping with the neighborhood um, much concerned by many voices about overlook from this quite tall building into other people's um, backyards uh, the concern that it's it represents overbuild that it's uh, it's too much building for the lot um, that really this is would be better dealt with as a rezoning issue rather than a minor variance. Um, and then uh, the concern by the next door neighbor that, uh, that it changes, because of the mutual driveway, that it changes their situation and, enjoy and enjoyment of their property in a, in a direct way, the impact. Those are the things I'd ask you to speak to, please. Um, okay, um, I had a prepared uh, written uh, response uh, based on the letters sent by the community at large. I'm going to go through it because it touches your questions as well as others, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to emphasize that the size uh, of the house, of the proposed building, is based on the size of the existing house. If you see in this uh, diagram. Uh, the red line represents the uh, the dotted red line is the current profile of the bungalow. The walls, as they go up, follow that line. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, my original written uh, response. Disturbance due to the construction is inevitable. However. Most of the existing building is retained. Only the roof and the interior partitions will be removed. Access to the job site for demolition, parking, and deliveries will be from the lane. Boarding will be installed on the sidewalk with a man door. Access to the shared driveway with 454 will be available at all times. Protection scaffolding will be installed when strictly necessary. Staff will be attentive to any specific concern during construction. Parking concerns were addressed in my earlier presentation, but I'd like to emphasize 
that younger couples and seniors who will occupy this future building don't necessarily own that many cars these days. They bike, they use Uber, and they work from home. If they own a car, they don't use it much. However, as an observation of what the neighbors refer to as existing parking congestion, it needs to be said that in this block, only 50% of the houses with lane access make use of it for parking. That is, 21 out of 41 houses disregard the lane as an access to a parking spot. We are receptive of comments focus focusing on style and scale. The final detailed design is not yet complete, and we will attempt to find connections with the neighbors and bridge perceptions. A front porch, as you see in the elevation, could we see the elevation? A front porch, a bay window, a sloping roof with a dormer window, a brick wall and entrance steps are all part of this proposal much like they are part of most houses on the street. Let's not forget that windows were very expensive 100 years ago. Today, our attempt is to introduce a contemporary palette of lines and materials that is not jarring to the immediate neighbors. The increase in scale from two stories to three stories is permitted under the bylaw and official plan. It is an intrinsic right available to all homeowners on this street. Many older streets in the city with narrow lots of these, as these have continuity of three-story semis or detached houses. On the loss of green space, as some neighbors argue, the fact is that the current bungalow has 42 square meters of soft landscaping. Can we go back to the site plan? In the rear yard, while the proposed fourplex will have 73 square meters of soft landscaping or an increase of 73%. The front yard will remain the same. There, are, there is no uh, soft landscaping variance. The owner of the bungalow next door who just spoke has a list of concerns. The site plan indicates a fence, a new fence between the properties from the end of the right of way to the lane. His concern, or her concern, is with the grease maneuvering space for their car. This can be resolved with a friendly discussion on site as the proponents are willing to come to a mutual agreement on this matter. Uh, he's also concerned about the stability of the garage once the 456 garage is removed. This can also be discussed on site regarding necessary repairs. Privacy concerns from overlooking balconies could be a condition of this Committee of Adjustment approval mandating translucent side guards to 1.8 meters, as has been done in previous applications. Regarding garbage, um, with four apartments, uh, the way it works is that not every tenant has his own bins. Uh, the city rents larger bins where collective uh, garbage is put into Applicant. and then moved by the uh, project manager or whoever is assigned to do that to the uh, sidewalk Applicant. early in the morning of pickup day. Applicant, I'll uh, I'll our speculation is that there will be um, on recyclables day two large bins, two of the largest bins the city has and the two green bins and on garbage days three uh, large bins and two Mr. Uh, Watt. green bins. Mr. Watt. Um, Mr. Watt, Mr. Watt, can you hear me? Regarding the neighbor, uh, the neighbor's window at 458, this window is on her second floor. Mr. Um, Watt, the chair is trying is to address you. Okay, Mr. Watt, I'm very, very sorry there to, uh, to mute you, but you have gone beyond your allotted time limit of five minutes by, a, by, a, by, a, by almost a minute. So thank you for that. Okay, then, at this point, panel, we can go back to Mr. Watt. Do you have any questions for him? Not seeing any or hearing any, then um, let's take the, uh, the application 
into committee for discussion moving toward a motion. And I'll ask, uh, I'll ask panel for some comments on, on the application, please. Now that we're in committee. Well, I can start first. Um, after looking at all those uh, drawings and the variances and listening to all the neighborhoods' uh, voices, I think all these variances add up by creating a very large impact to the neighborhood. And when I'm looking at the application, I'm also looking at how the how this neighborhood was designed for. Um, it's good to have improvement. It's good to intensify, but is the is the neighborhood is the street uh, does it come with the capacity to carry that extra load and i don't think it does having all these uh, small little adjustment is actually creating a very large impact on this uh, on the whole street and on the neighborhood it's not right on jane street it's on the east side of jane street it's a very quiet neighborhood uh, so i wouldn't support this uh, application at all nice uh, thank you mr Bayer. Um, I'd just like to concur with uh, uh, Mr. Chang because I'm familiar with the neighborhood and I recognize that this is very much a family-oriented um, neighborhood. Lots of little children in the other streets as well. Lots of new young families moving in um, for ha having an opportunity to actually have a, a home. Um, I think a fourplex in the this neighborhood is totally out of character and as Mr. Cheng said the impact on the neighbors is quite intense and for that reason as well I'm not in favor of supporting this uh, application. Thank you. Further comments? Um, Mr. Uh, I'll uh, weigh in um, if I could chair. It's not often that we see applications with this volume uh, of interest, um, uh, mostly in opposition, but I, I also note that there was some support uh, for this one. I just wanted to raise a couple of observations. Uh, um, I too am familiar with this neighborhood. Um, I would note that this location is uh, proximate to subway, uh, proximate to uh, several bus lines. Um, it is a walk to two different retail areas. Um, it is um, a location where, while I fully appreciate that the, the uh, prevailing trend is single family dwellings and, uh, and such, uh, it is also a neighborhood that I think is the kind of area that we should be encouraging more rental into uh, to allow um, families and individuals to enjoy the attributes of these kinds of neighborhoods which are proximate to so many uh, wonderful amenities um, you know some uh, one in opposition kind of talked about gentle density and and it while I know that brings different views from different people it is frankly a, a gentle density uh, application to introduce um, a little bit more density and a little bit more rental into an existing established neighborhood. Uh, I would note that um, fourplexes are allowed in this area. Uh, I would also note that the actual variances being requested, uh, frankly, are, are relatively modest. It's really the height uh, that is the big issue and it's only half a meter above what's permitted. Um, I. Um, I, I think it's frankly, uh, notwithstanding uh, the concern from uh, neighbors, uh, I, I don't see this as being in its in a broader perspective uh, the type of thing that we should be opposing. And I think you know bringing this kind of uh, rental into um, uh, established neighborhoods that are located uh, so closely to so many things that we all uh, value. Uh, I think is actually a good thing, and uh, I, I, I think I actually would support this kind of an application in uh, this kind of a neighborhood, for what it's worth. That's my observations. Thank you, Ms. Hayes. Um, this is a tough one. Um, 
the zoning does allow for a fourplex. Um, that's a given. Planning has no objections to this application. I recognize and acknowledge uh, the concerns noted by the neighbors with respect to that, yes, this would be a significant change. I think the variances as requested are minor. The development being mid-block certainly may have a different impact than if it was at the end of the block. Um, I would echo uh, the, the comments of my colleague with respect to the neighborhood and the location to transit and the retail hubs. And I think that um, I would be in support of this application as I do believe it allows for increased housing opportunities and a fourplex is permitted. And I don't think, in my opinion, the variances being requested are are major. Thank you. Um, my thoughts on this application are these. First of all, as, as someone noted, um, we don't very often see applications with this degree of comment, both in support and in opposition. What struck me about the nature of that comment was this, that um, most of the comment in opposition is from addresses quite close to the subject property. And um, these um, comment in support, and some of these letters read very passionately about the missing middle in the housing market, the crisis in rental housing. Um, but these, um, but the support letters came from not as close, you know, um, uh, 215 Fort York Boulevard, Runnymede, Windermere Ave. So we're a West Village area, but, but not, not directly involved. And I think back to the official plan, which distinguishes between the future treatment and hopes for avenues and main thoroughfares and the interiors of the of residential neighborhoods and how we should be protecting those whereas we expect to see development along the, uh, the avenues. So those things in mind, um, I, I really, I, I was persuaded by the, the concerns about the immediate, about the, uh, the impact by the immediate neighbors and uh, the impact it would have on them and on the, the character of the neighborhood, so I, I would not be supporting this application. And there we are. So I'll look to someone for a motion, please. Mr. Byer. Okay, I'll, I'll start. Uh, Excuse me, uh, I, I Ms. Hayes? Move to Ms. Hayes. Yes. I'm sorry, yes. Mr. Byer was just before you. I, recognize Mr. Bias. Sorry, Ms. Hayes. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move motion to reject the uh, application as it stands. Motion to uh, refuse. Is there a second to that motion? It is seconded by Mr. Chang. So it is moved and seconded to refuse the application. All those in favor? Show of hands, please. Thank you. Staff, have you recorded that? All those opposed? Show of hands, please. So opposition by Ms. Hayes and Mr. Clay. So the motion is carried and the application is refused. That concludes the first segment, the morning segment, we shall call it, of our agenda for today. Um, so at this stage, the panel has been going for very nearly five hours, and um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, we're going to recess now for lunch and come back, and um, we'll come back for 3.15 
3.15 p.m., just slightly less than an hour. I'll look for panel members to be prompt, please, in coming back. We still have a way to go. And uh, we will resume at 3.15. Until then, we are in recess. Thank you.
position too. has chosen now to give its updates. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm operating actually with these paper things, so I'm okay. And uh, let's be on the note of 315, on the 314. Good afternoon. During the declared emergency, Committee of Adjustments virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and in-person attendance limitations. This will be a virtual public hearing. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event platform moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. And ensure that you're watching the panel which is operating through City Hall. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting via their computer, phone or tablet app, or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When his or her item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person, at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Registered participants will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called upon to speak. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to 
to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990, as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that applies to property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property in order to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on a particular application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and PLAB will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email only. You may not agree with the decision of the committee. Decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, PLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision committee of the, of the decision of the committee. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or the applicant may proceed with their presentation if requested by the committee. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. And I will comment when you are approaching the limit. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and may make a presentation to the committee on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support of or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation. When all interested parties are finished, the applicant or agent will have an opportunity to rebut, but only to those issues that were raised by the speakers. And that'll mark the end of discussion. The application will then be taken into committee for a decision. Madam Deputy, Secretary Treasurer, are there any declarations? Uh, oh, sorry. Are there any requests for deferral? We do oh. have one, but it's for the 3.30 time slot, so we will have to wait a few minutes in case um, people are still not here. But we do have a request to close the file, item 28. 114 Bastido Avenue. Okay, that's
that request is before us then panel to close number 28. Deputy Secretary Treasurer, do you, do you know the reason why? Or should we do it when we get to uh, it? There is a letter in your package. Um, they've chosen not to proceed with their application. A notice was mailed out. Yeah, I remember now. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, Chair, uh, I reviewed the letter. Um, I would like to move a motion to accept the withdrawal and close the file. Is there a second to that motion? Chang seconds. So it is moved and seconded to close file number 28, 114 Bastido Avenue. All those panel members in favor, show of hands, please. The motion is carried. Thank you. That item 28 is closed. Are there any declarations of interest by panel or staff? with respect to the, uh, the afternoon time slot. Seeing none, we shall advance to the afternoon applications, beginning with application number 20. Twenty-three Fielding Avenue. On this application, the committee has before it the materials submitted by the applicant, further supporting materials submitted by the applicant 26 May. There is a 2018 trade adjustment decision affecting 25 fielding. And we have correspondence in opposition from Five uh, parties. I'll just give a quick reading of the numbers, the house numbers from which they come. On Fielding Avenue, from number 43, 7, 21, 21, 17, 17, 17, 7, 3, 9, 32, 19, 49, 26, 49, 11, 12, 15, 44, 31, 25, 31, 35, and 15. And there is one further letter from 28 Strathmore Boulevard. So moderator, do we have Yes, Mr. Chair, we have Jonathan Zenkowski, who is a registered agent. Jonathan, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead. Good afternoon, panel. Good afternoon, Jonathan. Just a moment, please. And can I ask you, a moderator, um, can you give me a, 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 your best number, please, on the number of registered speakers that are present wishing to speak in opposition? Mr. Chair, we have 15 people registered to speak to this item in addition to the agent. Um, so far, there are a couple, though, who we've emailed and called but don't seem to have joined us. In the meantime, I'll try to see if, uh, if they do. Very good. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, Jonathan, could you state your name, please? Yes, Jonathan Benskowski, Solark. I'm a planner with Solark. Very good. You have five minutes to um, present your application to the panel. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. The proposal before you today is for a two-story rear addition that is 12 feet in length in addition to a proposed new uh, one-story garage at the rear of the property. If we could zoom into the rear of the property, please. What makes this somewhat of a unique property is this is a key intersection point of the lane. So this is an entrance where individuals can enter off of fielding, travel south, and go east or west to access other properties within the laneway itself. If we could go to my support documentation, please. 
what I've submitted to you today uh, is a couple of photos just to show the dense character of the neighborhood of Fielding. This is downtown Toronto. There are minimal setbacks uh, in addition to ample green space that is being retained within the property itself. So here we have just a field, uh, sorry, a overhead view. If we can zoom in a little bit, there, there will be a pin dropped on the site of what we have here. So, so in the middle of the screen, we can see a red pin. So access would be coming off of Fielding to, to provide access to the proposed rear garage, which is proposed off of the east-west portion of the lane. It is not proposed off of the principal portion of the lane. If we could keep going to the next page, please. The introduction of a garage, as we can see here from the City of Toronto map, is not a situation that is not already found off of that lane. Of the 22 properties that have access off of this lane, nine of them currently have garages. So in terms of adding a garage onto this property, this is not an instance where adding an inappropriate building form or something that already doesn't exist. We could please continue down, please. I, I understand a lot of the there. If we can see the black screenshot. Sorry, if we could just go up into the black screenshot. So what we have here is communication between myself, our caseworker at C of A, as well as uh, transportation services. This is an application, as you know, that is reviewed by transportation services being laneway parking. Uh, as we can see here, transportation services has no objection or issue with the proposal that is before you today. Uh, as you are aware, committee members, often sightline analysis are asked for in situations where there is a concern. There is no concern raised by any City of Toronto department being planning nor transportation with the location of this rear garage. So in terms of, of any type of impact, it is the impact that can be found there today. And if we could just go to the survey, please. The variances that relate to that are not for a setback from the center line of the south portion of the lane. The south portion of the lane is as per the zoning bylaw of 2.5 meters and is actually in excess of it. The variance you're looking for today from the center line is actually from the eastern portion. Now, presently, there is a board fence along from that eastern portion, and it is well within the rights of a property owner to build a fence um, on their property if they would like. Sorry, if we could just get the survey up because I would just like to indicate the, the corner display that is already on the site. So presently now at the rear of the site, there already is a 45 meter, sorry, 45 degree angle corner slice to allow for access uh, for, for individuals to travel west coming off of there. Here we go, there we go. So if we can zoom in a little bit. We see the corner splay that is on the site already at the rear, in addition to a board fence that is located along the laneway. So in terms of any sight line issues that might be there, um, they're mitigated by that corner splay, in addition to a fence that is already there today. In terms of City of Toronto policies to provide parking, where there is a laneway present, it is always the, the preference of the city to provide parking within the lane. Now saying that, we are proposing a garage in terms of the setbacks from the lanes, those are appropriate in my opinion, and this has been circulated through transportation as well as planning, and they have no objection. In terms of the 12-foot rear addition on the dwelling, if we could just go to one of the side elevations, please. The two-story rear addition is 12 foot in length, as mentioned, as we can see here. That 12-foot rear addition uh, offers a flat roof at the rear to mitigate any impact to the adjacent neighbors. Mr. Bankowski. So addition. Mr. Benkowski, yes. you are approaching your time limit. I'll ask you to make your summary, please. Perfect. I think I think it, it, the last portion is it just has to deal with the. If we could just keep going, it just does deal with the roof uh, as it is to the adjacent neighbors. It is a two-story addition, and I would just note that in my package I did put a decision for the adjacent property on the opposite side of the lane, which has an approved three-story addition on it, which is a rear uh, as well as top up of the existing. So in terms of impact, it is mitigated to a flat roof that is proposed at the rear uh, to the adjacent neighbor. And I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's go to the moderator. And moderator, our first speaker, please. Mr. Chair, our first speaker is Julia Martin, but 
it doesn't look like she's here anymore. She was. We emailed her, but she isn't back. So our next registered speaker after that is Dorothy Russell. Dorothy is not here either. We called and emailed her. Okay. Our next speaker, number three, is Matthew Pickard. I believe he's here. Yes, he is. Matthew, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead. Uh, thank you to the committee for taking the time to uh, to hear the, uh, the neighbors around uh, 23 Fielding. I'll bring forward a few points. First, I'm going to issue some corrections to the agent that just spoke. Um, number one, the board fence that he mentioned numerous times, that board fence never extended to the end of the lane. It extended midway. So what he's saying is currently incorrect. There has not been a board fence there to the end of the lane for as long as I've lived on this property, which has been 50 or in the neighborhood, which has been 15 years. Correction number two to the agent. Um, he says there are nine garages. That is incorrect. He is looking at structures. Those are not all garages. Most recent garages built on the lane were pushed back the required setback. The most recent was built on the eastern side of the lane on Strath of, off of Strathmore, which was required to push itself back or chose to push itself back the acceptable setback distance. Two corrections. Correction number three. In the application, the application states that this individual took possession of the property in 2015. That is also incorrect. This individual purchased the property recently in approximately 2020. And I'll explain why that matters a little more in a moment. But I want to correct some, some inaccurate statements by the agent. Clearly, there are 25 um, letters of opposition filed um, with this committee. There are zero letters of support issued um, for this project. Uh, the majority of, sorry, sorry, I'll continue. Sorry, I heard some background noise. The majority of residents around 23 Fielding are standing in opposition to the proposed variance, as we believe they are major. He is correct. There was an additional, there was a construction project in uh, shared, uh, sorry, on the lane, uh, similar in nature. Um, but those, uh, that project was smaller. Um, it did not have the garage requirements or requests that they put in. Um, and as a result, this one is very different at 12 feet out and 20 feet long and a garage that does not meet the setback distances. Our neighborhood um, is uh, much like much of Toronto is made up of uh, semi-detached homes with 15 foot lots um, and some freestanding um, homes. All right, this purchase, this property was purchased recently, I'm believing with the intention of, of renovating. Um, if, you know, with the requested setbacks, another property obviously could have been purchased that would have not required the variants that are being asked for. A couple key points with respect to um, our effect. We are approximately three homes away from the proposed changes. We use that lane every day. Our children and our families use that lane every day. We don't believe that the setback variances proposed make the lane any safer. We believe it re makes the lane least less safe than it currently is. We believe it will create blind spots. And as a result, we don't believe that the request for those variants is not to be granted and to, for the garage to be constructed as per the setbacks is inappropriate. We also, I also note that from my backyard, I will clearly see the side of this structure. It will go out 12 feet. I am approximately 30 feet away from it. Uh, it will go out 12 feet and 20 feet high. It will be covered with a metal sheeting um, it will remove trees and vegetation that we currently see in place for this. It will reduce the quality of our backyard and the things we do. It will affect our light. Um, and overall, it does not match the character of the neighborhood. And note that, yes, well, there was one expansion of one property, and the majority of us have learned that we don't like those expansions. I think the last thing to... Well, anyways, there's going to be more statements made by others to this committee, but again, we believe that the variance is more major and that we don't believe it should be permitted at this time. Thank you to the committee. Thanks very much. Questions, panel? Okay, we'll go on to the next speaker in just a moment. And um, that, that uh, I appreciated that comment because of the, uh, the 
Mr. Speaker, explain how every day this would affect safety in the lane, for example, in his view. So I'll ask the speakers that are lined up to speak. We do want to hear from you. And um, what really helps the committee members as they're sifting and processing this information is when you speak about the impact that the proposed development would have upon you. So, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Chair, the next registered speaker is David Downing. Uh, David, you've been unmuted, you can go ahead. Great, hi, uh, thank you again for, uh, for the opportunity to speak uh, in, in opposition to this. Uh, uh, my uh, friend and neighbor, uh, Matthew, has done a good job of articulating some of the things that, that I think the neighborhood is, uh, is concerned about, and I'll uh, try to be brief and add a, a, couple, of, a couple of more. Please state your um, name. Just to get started, yeah, please my name, state. Yeah, please st uh, my name is David Downey. I live at 7 Fielding Avenue, so a distance uh, from from this, but not much distance at all if you know the, know the neighborhood. Um, so, so I don't. Uh, I'll start by saying I don't think these these thing these uh, 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 variances are minor in in any way. Well, the the net effect of the extension is to add. Uh, uh, twenty percent of uh, uh, addition of twenty percent of floor space to uh, to the residents, which I, I don't know how twenty percent is is minor. Um, the second thing I would say is that the combination of adding a deck and a garage, con uh, contrary to what the the applicant has said, eliminates virtually all of the, <laughs> of the green space on that property except for our tiny uh, front lawns. So. Um, and and uh, the setback again for the garage is is uh, a safety concern uh, for us and and for uh, our friends who, who have children who play there. Um, so that's the, the the first thing I would uh, I would say. The second thing is um, uh, that uh, the extension uh, proposed is really out of character with the with the neighborhood, notwithstanding the previous property that was was approved. Um, you know, the applicant had a choice to to build up. It would have been uh, relatively easy to create a third story here, um, impacting no one's uh, light, no one's use of uh, or enjoyment of their property, uh, no one's um, uh, even from a from a, a, a visual aesthetic point of view would have had no impact in this neighborhood at all. But the applicant chose not to do that and chose to extend. Um, extend the house. So, so you know, he, the other thing I would say kind of connected to that is that um, it's fairly clear that the applicant was not really interested in, in uh, joining the community or being part of the community or working with the community around the, the, the variances that, that um, and in fact, you know, this, this applicant um, I think is, is in, in the, the business of of uh, buying and renovating houses again, no problem with that. Um, you know, if you bought another house on our our street and purchased, I think, another, if if my information is correct, another house in the neighborhood. So this is not um, someone who's invested in the community. And I, I just as a, a matter of, of of principle, feel kind of like why would we be rewarding someone who is in fact not really interested in what. Uh, is suitable for the community or interested in the investing in the community. I, so I find that uh, troubling. Two other things, and, and then I'll wrap up. One is that that 12-foot extension, as, uh, as uh, uh, has been stated, is a, a, a long extension. It, it uh, impacts the, the light um, uh, of, of and, and the, the enjoyment of, of uh, yards, uh, uh, you know, much further than um, the, the people who are the owners of the, uh, the, the, the semi-detached house next to it. Uh, the fact of the matter is these are 15-foot lots. They're two feet between each lot, which means, you know, in a matter of 50 feet, you have 20, um, or pardon me, you have five residences, and, um, and uh, we'll be able to see um, uh, that that from uh, that extension from uh, from our um, uh, back deck. So 
um, I guess the, the other thing is that that um, you know if you're talking about how uh, the the, um, the the extension meets the character and the aesthetic of uh, of the, the neighborhood, it really it really doesn't, and um, you know that has that that extension um, uh, also uh, to me uh, creates a uh, a precedent for for you know building monster homes in a in a neighborhood where the the land use has never really was never really intended that way, and and certainly isn't isn't zoned that way. So so I'll wrap it up there. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. But um, this is something that I think we're as a, a community and a neighborhood really um, uh, we're really opposed to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions, panel. the next speaker registered is Martin Sayer. Uh, Martin, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Martin. And State your thank name, you please. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is uh, Martin Shire. My wife and I, we live on 21 Fielding Avenue, which is the house attached to the house in question, 23 Fielding Avenue. You're the other side of the semi-detached? Attached, yeah. Thank right you. Uh, uh, west of that. Go the first ahead. thing that I would like to make clear is that uh, we are not against change. We invite upgrading. We are also not against extensions. However, they must be done with respect and with mindful attention to how they impact those around them. If respect and mindfulness is not part of change, then we'll create a negative impact and change people's lives negatively. As mentioned in my letter to the board, my objection is based on the fact that these changes are not minor variances. As mentioned before, the property in question is asking to extend the property more than 20% above the 0 0.69 times the area of the lot per meter. What this means is that we at 21 Fielding and those west of us will be robbed of natural light as we will be replaced by a 12 by 20 feet wall. Imagine you waking up in the morning, you look outside, you see a wall. You go down to the kitchen, you have your coffee, you look outside, you see the wall. You step out on your deck and you are in the dark and looking at a huge wall. Needless to say that this will be a terrible impact on our property, our life, and our mental state of mind. Not only this is a major variance, but this would also change how many of us enjoy our house and our neighbors, of which many, especially west of 23, we also see this big wall and lack of natural light. Regarding the garage, I know it will be addressed by many other speakers of building, and I won't talk about it due time. We first met Julia, the new owner of 23 Fielding, and her dad, Jerry Martin, in August 2020. The conversation was somewhat polite, but we had no say. We were told that this plan, and by the way, that the tree has to go. This is a tree on our side of the fence. There were no discussions of compromise as their plans were set and it was made clear. Shortly after our meeting, Julia, the owner, sent us a test stating, and unquote, the work will start that week as they no longer need to go through the committee of adjustment. We immediately replied the test and asked uh, how this was possible. We never received a reply. The next time that they communicated with us was uh, a few weeks ago, May 2021, and they were asked to meet with Julia, her dad, and the contractor as they now had to go through the committee of adjustment after all, and now wanted us on board to approve, to approve their project. We received a text from Julia the following day after the meeting saying, and I quote, if you are willing to provide me with a letter indicating that you do not object to my committee of adjustment application, I will update your existing deck in your yard, something like that. We also contacted and got several replies from our counselor, Paula Fletcher, office. I quote, we encourage residents, as many of them have already done, to write and appear to the Committee of Adjustment to express their concerns. The committee is designed to mediate the dispute and will listen to what the neighbors have to say. We will keep an eye on this file as it moves forward and we'll share your concern with Councilor Fletcher ahead of the hearing. 
90% of building residents east and west of 23 building have written their objection letter to you, as you well know. Resident from the north side of building and resident from the street south of the building has, have also written to you. Chairperson and the board members, I understand the final decision is yours. I truly hope that you can see why we do not find this variousness as minor. We are truly concerned and we value our properties and the joy we get from that. I'm hopeful that the board will value our concern. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Question for you, uh, and that, that is, um, you mentioned that the applicant had uh, made you an offer of you write a letter and I will update your deck. Was, was, that, was that a phone call or a, or a written letter or what was that? Can I respond? Sure. Please uh, do. Yeah, sure. Uh, as I said, we met. Um, they wanted to meet us. We met with them. They, again, they told us what was their project, which we already knew because uh, we received a letter of a community of adjustment and we knew it ahead of time. Uh, during the conversation, we one more time we asked them to please understand the effect that a 12 feet by two stories wall will have on the, our future and the future of some other houses beside us. Of course, their replies was like, don't even bother trying. We hire a professional to do this uh, uh, application. We'll win, for sure we'll win. However, if you, uh, if we can get you silent, so we'll be gladly um, fix your uh, your deck, which I find it very insulting. Um, after that was followed the following day, as I said, by Julia, the owner of the house, repeating in a more polite way exactly what it was said to us. For your silence, we're willing to fix your deck. Uh, I guess replacing 10, 10 pieces of wood and uh, 18 screws, I'm not sure what it was. But anyway, um, I would try, try to give a character of what we are dealing here and also that the fact that uh, um, this, this wall will put us in total darkness uh, for a long time. And, uh, and then another part is that uh, last year they worked all summer, it was COVID time, and we could not use our backyard, of course, because of the constant noise and banging and smashing everybody. So, but I understand the part and uh, we, we accept it gladly and we never, never interfere with that. But now, because of the fact they didn't want to go to the community adjustment, now there are the second summer they will be dealing with this one. It's I just try to give a picture of the character and the fact that uh, we we really don't appreciate this one here. As somebody else mentioned before, okay. we even suggest please go up to the second third store. We're okay with that. No. We allow it. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions for the this speaker panel? Okay then, um, next speaker moderator. Mr. Chair, Sean Symes is the next speaker registered, but we've called Nino Kim and he isn't here. Uh, Mary Babb is the next registered speaker after him, but she's canceled um, her registration. The next speaker after Mary is Wendy Gardham. Uh, Wendy, you can go ahead, uh, Anita, do you? Hi, thank you for having me. Um, so I just want to kind of give you some context. I live at 31 Fielding Avenue, so I am east to the proposed project, um, east of that T junction in the laneway. And there's a couple of variances that I would like to address because I don't find that they are minor at all. Uh, the first one being, as many of my neighbors have also echoed, is that laneway. Um, and building the garage. And again, there's nothing against building a garage. Um, it's just the setback um, that they're proposing. They're asking for, in their words, a minor variance, but I think a major variance because it's a 10% reduction in that setback. And if you're ever maneuvering through our T-junction in the laneway, it's a very tight turn. Um, I have my car parked in my parking pad and during the summer, it's not that bad, but you do still have to be mindful because as one of the other neighbors who has a garage on the other side of that T-junction will attest, she's faced many damages on the garage um, when people are taking that turn. 
Also, when snow is involved, it makes it very hard to maneuver. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is there's 16 children that I've last counted, if I'm accurate with, uh, 16 children that actually are in the age group that would access that laneway and that do access that laneway on a regular basis. Um, and as was mentioned, having a garage to the end of that setback um, will also drastically reduce kind of the visibility of these children. Now, as a neighborhood, we put up, I don't know who it was still to this day, but somebody was awesome and they put up two convex mirrors um, at the end of the T junction just to help us with the visibility of the children who are scooting and running by. Um, so, in my mind, taking the garage and extending it out and asking for a minor variance, which again is not minor, it's major, is really going to affect the visibility of the children, so it's a safety issue, as well as the maneuverability of that. And if um, Julia moves in and she's trying to park her car, I am sure she will also experience how tight that turn is once that garage is all the way there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Another thing I'd just like to touch on is, although I will be east of this proposed um, renovation, where they are planning on extending 12 feet back and on both stories, not just the first level, but both stories, um, I can imagine the amount of light it is going to block. Our properties are pretty small. Um, and I use my backyard as an extension of my living space. During the summer, it's another room of our house. And if there was an extension right next to our, like right next to us, it would completely block out the light, um, making my view from my back bedroom window miserable, making the view from the kitchen and the amount of light that comes into my house next to none, and then again, when I'm out on the deck, probably entertaining, um, trying to use as much as the property I can of our small property, it would have a drastic impact. So those are the things I just want to touch upon because I don't think that what they're applying for is minor at all. It's, it's major. Thank you Thank very you. much. Questions panel? Thanks to the speaker. The next speaker, please, is moderated. Mr. Chair, the next speaker is Patricia Ahern. Patricia, you can immediately you can go ahead. Um, hello, my name is Patricia Ahern. I live at 3 Fielding Avenue. Hello, carry on. You have uh, five minutes to approach the panel. Patricia, are you there? Hear me? We, we do hear you, Patricia. You're, is, is, this is your time now. Please proceed with your presentation. My name is Patricia Ahern, and I live at 3 Fielding Avenue. Um, I consider these variances major variances. I think they're very disruptive to the neighborhood, to the backyards of many of these families that live on Fielding Avenue. Um, the huge garage presenting a problem for traffic, uh, snow removal, and um, everything that, that is um, a consequence of snow removal, for, for example, slipping on the ice and various um, problems with uh, maneuvering cars and being careful not to um, uh, uh, the children that are in the neighborhood. My main concern is the amount of sky that I have and the amount of light that I have on my property. So. From my back deck, I can see um, the property 25 that has already had an extension. So I know that 23 I will also see, and it blocks out um, the small amount of sky, the small amount of space that I have in my tiny little um, uh, post, uh, postage stamp style yard, which we all have on the street. We have very small yards, and if if a person would want a garden or would want to even sit on the deck and have sunshine, 
I'm already um, being blocked from lots of light from the Sunday school lofts, which uh, have been renovated at 14 Dewhurst. They have taken out a substantial amount of my light and sky, and uh, uh, the addition on 23 would also um, decrease in the precious uh, amount of light that uh, we have. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comment. Questions, panel? Next speaker, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Chair, the next speaker registered is Martin Anstis. Uh, Martin, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead. Hi, my name is Martin Anstis. I live at 32 Fielding Avenue on the south side of the street. Uh, I, with my neighbors, uh, I believe this variation is not uh, minor. I believe it is major. Uh, the, combine, the combined property, the large expansion, uh, plus a new deck and plus a new garage will overwhelm the rear lot. These, effect, these extensions will effectively eliminate the garden. I would like to point out with the committee that the plan we are looking at is different and incorrect. On A1, it shows a small minor deck, but if you go to the last um, elevation on uh, A13, you will see, I am guessing, because again, the, the, the plan does not indicate this, a further 12 feet extension deck. So the combined effect of the extension of 12 feet plus a 12 foot deck is a 24 foot extension. This is excessive. There will be no green space. Uh, and I would request that the committee seriously look into the who prepared these plans. Uh, for the impact on us, uh, I, with my neighbors, uh, these houses are reasonable size. Um, they are very closely set together. The laneways between the houses are narrow. Um, so that effect will have a huge impact on us. These, the street is nearly all semi-detached. Uh, if the committee allows this, then this will affect everybody on our street. I'd like to say thank you to the committee, and that concludes what I have to say. Thank you. Panel, questions? Monterey, next speaker, please. As, as you say, uh, could I request that you, is there any way to increase the size of this plan we're now looking at and see what the deck is proposed and actually then go to A13? And you can see the actual deck and the projection of the deck. So you can see at the rear of the extension, the deck proposed is like a walkout. But actually, if you look at the final, final proposed deck, I'm guessing, it's much, much larger. Yeah, that's A3. So if you go to the end, you will see drawings and diagrams of a much, much bigger proposed. As I say, the combination, so please, there, there, if you see this deck, you can see the deck is also excessive. So it's not a 12 foot extension, it's more like a 24 foot extension. Thank you. Is this the drawing you're referring to here that shows the deck? Yeah. Larger in your view? Well, it's clearly larger. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm not mistaken. If you could look, if you look at the, the, the floor plan, Thank you very much. Look at the floor plan in A1 and A3. The deck is completely different. We will ask the, the floor applicant. plan in A1 and A3 is like a little walkout platform. So these, the, you can see that on the right-hand side. Yes. So these plans are incorrect. We'll ask the applicant to comment on that. Thank you very much, Mark. Questions for the speaker panel? Mr. Chair, the next speaker registered was Annie Simitsis and Peter Sanis. But Peter was here, but it looks like he's, he's no longer. So um, I called him. There was no answer. Thank you. The next speaker registered is Nicole Lorenz. Nicole, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead. 
Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Nicole Lorenz. I live at 13 Fielding, uh, which I purchased with my spouse uh, just a few years ago in the summer of 2018. Uh, I have a few uh, very significant concerns. I think Matthew uh, Picard did a very good job of summarizing. The first is that my child is one of the 16 young children, and I stress young, uh, who play daily in the laneway uh, all year round. It is a gathering spot for all of them, um, albeit at a six foot distance these days. And as Wendy pointed out, we do have a few mirrors that residents have put up, but it, it is by far the safest place for them in the neighborhood. And I am concerned that the garage not meeting the setback requirements would limit visibility and would increase the danger to my child. As Matt also pointed out, there was a recent, there, there actually are not many garages on the side of the laneway we're talking about. There are only two garages currently. The rest of the structures you see are sheds. The one on the other side that was recently built actually abuts my property and was required to meet the setback requirements, which was terrific because it gives just that much more notice when a garage door opens and a car starts entering or leaving for a child to get out of the way a child who's probably not paying attention. My next concern is around the green space. As others have pointed out, the plans you have are not, uh, are not consistent. We live on one of many blocks in Toronto where all of the trees are over 100 years old and one by one they are being taken down. The plans that have been provided to you will result in virtually no green space remaining in this lot. They will, it will be, I think, you know, it's about six feet in the backyard that stays as any sort of green space. It's a problem because it, one of the only trees we have in the laneway will be removed in order to build this. It's a problem because we have a lot of water issues on our block and water runoff is a concern for me. If their entire backyard is now going to be concrete instead of green space. My house, for instance, had a giant tree in the front yard that was removed a month after we moved in because it was one of the aging ones. And now I have a four foot ginkgo that will, will someday be a real tree, right? So green space is a big concern for me. The other issue is the, the size and the nature of this extension, it being a two story extension. My house, if you, look at, if you look on the Google map, does actually have an extension, but it's a single story extension. I also am in a position of having one of the longer lots because I am at the end of the laneway. So the extension in our case, which was there before we bought the house, did not reduce green space. And because it's only one story, it does not impact anyone's privacy, anyone's access to light. It's, it's not much taller than any of the fences, right? This, this apparently was not even consideration for this owner. The problem there is that this same family has now bought 29 fielding. So this is not a, a maybe someday someone else will follow this lead scenario. If these variances are granted, they will follow this scenario exactly on 29 fielding. And more of us are not speaking up about that because we've received letters from their lawyers threatening us with lawsuits for doing so. I think, you know, the, the in some, right, I, I, all of us, basically everyone who lives on the street, some people who live south of us, some people on the other side of the street. Um, no one is in favor of this. We, there, there was an extension done to a family who'd been in the neighborhood for a long time, who has young children, who needed the space. I think in retrospect, a lot of us um, were not pleased with the end result and wish things had been done a bit differently, which is why we're all of us speaking up now when maybe we didn't that time around. Um, but, I, but I think, you know, I. It's clear how, how we're all going to be impacted by this, the negative impact to the green space, the negative impact to the light, the precedent it's going to set immediately for a house three doors down in a neighborhood that is meant to be small, semi-detached homes, right? And is now one by one going to be picked off and turned into these mega houses that eliminate all of our green space if this is allowed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Panel members, any questions of the speaker? Moderator. 
Mr. Chair, the next registered speaker is Judy Lederman, but we called and emailed her and she's not present. Uh, the next registered speaker is Shaquille Chattery. Uh, I believe he's here. Yeah. Shaquille, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead. Hi, everybody. My name is Shaquille Chaudhary, and I am a resident uh, at 25 Fielding Avenue. Um, I live here with my wife and our two kids who are seven and nine. And um, uh, I've been here for over 20 years personally uh, in this house, in this location. So uh, the, there's, there's a couple of concerns that I want to raise. Uh, and one is to build off what Nicole said around green space. I was actually shocked to learn that you know, um, that, uh, that a tree is going to be removed. That's a substantial tree um, uh, uh, um, on Martine and Connie's uh, lawn because that's a beautiful black oak. And somehow it just came like a smidgen under the girth at the right or wrong location. And as a result, it makes it vulnerable. So I'm really concerned about that because that's a beautiful tree that's been here and it needs to continue to grow into a uh, a bigger tree so that that that's a big concern for me if the, if the extension is going to affect that that's that's huge I think green space is important the the main point that I want to make is really about the garage and uh, I'm well positioned to talk about the garage because uh, I have a carport right at that and the mirror uh, reflection because I'm at 25 and I, I share on the opposite side of the lane as 23 and uh, about a decade ago uh, uh, we got a carport built on our garage and um, at that time we followed the, the I'm really glad this the city has changed its its um, uh, uh, its requirements because uh, what got approved back then has has been a constant headache because even though I chose to pull the garage back to three meter uh, three meters off of the center line as opposed to two and a half that was not enough it was not enough because we immediately realized the turning problems that was going to be there. Now, I'm not a handyman. I was really irritated and frustrated with the city that they would approve this on a corner turning lot. Um, had I known this before, I would have completely made a uh, push for my garage to be smaller and thinner because it immediately created a problem. And the only relief that we had was that our neighbor, Bill, who uh, previously owned 23, he just had a car back there and we were able to use um, um, part of his uh, lane, which is where, which is I think the setbacks are right now, which I think are better and more improved. We use that in order to turn and get out. Now with the kind of um, variances that they're requesting, that will make it virtually impossible for um, most cars to get in and out without doing a three, four, five point turn. It also makes uh, both the, if the garage gets built at 23, as well as my carport, as well as um, the other garages on the Strathmore side, vulnerable to damage. I have, I have, um, uh, my, my carport has sustained considerable damage over the years uh, from regular cars. Now, we haven't even talked about the fact that uh, uh, pretty much there's no truck, no service vehicle, no, um, no anything that uh, uh, ambulances could get back there. So as much as the agent said that the city approved it, the city also approved um, my carport 10 years ago, and it has been nothing but a headache because it, it limits the limits the turning. I, I did my best to even try to reduce and modify the corner that sits on the, on the, on the carport so that people uh, can still get by. It still is not enough. And again, I, as I said, my setback, I took it back not 2.5 meters, I took it three meters back, and even that wasn't enough. And, and so, you know, the folks, uh, you know, planning department, they have not been in our laneway because I want to say this was a laneway. When I first bought the house, this was a laneway that was originally a right of way. It was only for the houses that had backyards onto from fielding that backyards onto the laneway. It wasn't for the Strathmore side. So now you've got Strathmore side has also opened up their uh, garages respectfully, and that's legal and that's fine. But just remember, this used to be a right of way for just the, the uh, uh, eight or 10 houses that actually back onto the little laneway from the fielding side. So by, by allowing this in, you're just gonna put one other obstacle. I have two kids there as, as uh, the other neighbors talked about. It, it turns into a safety issue. It turns into uh, a damage issue. 
and I think that's just going to continue. So, uh, you know, strongly in in opposition, uh, especially to that part. Now, if they have to go with a gr smaller garage that's within the setbacks, I don't have as much of a problem with it. It will still cause some issues, but it won't cause anywhere near the issues if these variances get approved. Thank you. Questions panel of this speaker. Sarah Beth Craig is the last person registered to speak to this item, and we've called and emailed her, and it doesn't look like she's present. Okay. Good afternoon. No, Mr. Chair, she's not. She's not here. She's not with us. No. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Then we can safely say that we've tried to get these speakers, and some have elected not to wait, and so on. Yep. So, okay, then that concludes presentations from speakers. And those were all in opposition. So in just a moment, we'll return to the applicant. And applicant, um, I will ask you to address the issues that uh, we've heard. Some of them are recurring themes from different speakers. Um, firstly, the garage, the uh, issues it might raise with respect to visibility around that corner. This appears to be a place where kids play every day, safety, and simple practicality of making the turn. Um, we'll ask you to address the issue of the deck. Um, could you please uh, explain to us why the, the size of the deck appears to be different in one of your submission elements as compared to another submission element. Um, the issue of light is a recurring theme that the, uh, the large wall will um, be destructive to light and enjoyment of many of the small of the backyards which are small. Back to the lane, the issue of snow removal being compounded by the extension of the garage. Um, uh, the next door neighbor, immediate next door neighbor, who has a deep concern about seeing nothing but a wall from many of from, from that side of his house and the impact that will have, he described it as an impact on his life because it, the house is small and the wall that you're proposing is large. There's a general sense, there was general comments that the, uh, that the uh, development is not in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. So those are the things please to address. Go ahead, you have five minutes. Yes, um, and to address the FSI issue from the addition first, I, I think when we look at FSI, it's important to note how that's appropriated on the land and what's leading to that increase in FSI. The, the addition that is before you today is for a modest 12-foot addition at the rear. That 12-foot addition leads to a dwelling length of 15.24 meters. That 15.24 meter, meters does not request a side yard setback in the east, and it's built in line with the dwelling to the west. Uh, in terms of it being a semi-detached dwelling and where those walls come, I, you know, I, I too live, I, I live nearby in Riverdale. I also have a public laneway behind my house. I also live in a very tightly knit um, urban neighborhood, uh, much like this. Uh, in terms of, of a variation of house, we live, we live in the downtown of Toronto. Uh, you know, I mean, these are very modestly sized houses, as mentioned. This is for a 32 square meter addition or 344 square feet. The existing house is 1,140 square feet. So in, in terms of how we're going to appropriate an addition and where that leads to that FSI increase, this FSI is over two floors. There is no request for a height variance uh, in front of you today on a semi-detached dwelling. This is a 12 foot and in my opinion appropriate addition. Uh, in terms of the deck, if we could just zoom into the some of those site stats we see at the rear. 
Um, I, I, I don't have much of an answer for you as to why one plan shows a larger deck than a smaller deck. But what I can tell you is this was not done under a zoning waiver. This was done by way of a zoning review. And if we see here when we say X indicates rear yard, those are the statistics that if you were to approve this would be bound by because it does not request any type of rear yard landscaping variance. So I can understand the concern of a reduction, but if this were to be approved, it would have to comply with the zoning bylaw for any rear yard landscaping requirements and decks are not a part of that. It is not a part of soft state landscaping. So these numbers that are in front of you today, it's just a little bit uh, more on the bottom of the screen. That's the proposal that is before you today are for those rear yard landscaping um, numbers. In terms of the access to the lane, you know, I, I, I very much appreciate the issue of safety in that. Um, I'm not quite sure I understand snow removal and, and issues like that. Um, this is a property that would most likely have a fence located along the eastern portion, which is the entrance part of, of the laneway. Um, with or without a garage, it will be sent basically just to screen any type of access to the rear. Uh, I, I don't think we would have a problem eliminating variance number two, which is a setback from the property line at the rear. Therefore, going from that 0.45 meters to the required one meter, um, I, I don't think we have an issue with that. Um, so, so if you were to take a look at that, I, I believe that would eliminate a lot of the concerns of visibility. But again, uh, in terms of coming in and out uh, of a laneway parking space like this, um, it is always going to be tight. But the city provides these lanes for parking. Now, whether it's in a garage or if it's in a surface space, there really is no difference as to how you maneuver in and out of that space. The garage itself does not inhibit you from coming in or out at all. Uh, and, and, and in terms of a fencing that would be there, um, if it were to be a pad spot, there would be a fence with a gate to protect the car um, uh, from anybody that is in that area that lives in the house. Um, I'm just sorry, I'm just going over my notes because there was a lot to go over. Oh, the last thing is uh, that accessory structure is permitted. That garage is permitted. Uh, planning reviews it. Um, I, I, I don't, and, and if I said it, I did not mean to say that Transportation Service has approved this. Um, Transportation Service is not objecting to what is before you today, okay? So in, in terms of that, uh, I don't have an issue with transportation, but like I said, we have no problem moving that proposed garage 0.55 meters to the north away, eliminating that variance. That would mean the only variance request that is before you today that would have to do with the garage is for the center line of the eastern portion of the, the driveway, which is that public laneway that accesses the key intersection which would most likely be sent regardless um, uh, limiting visibility as it is. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'll there's a lot of make, notes here. I'll ask you to make your final comments, please. You are approaching your Yeah, time. again, I think it's just, it's, just a, it's just a matter of looking where that FSI is appropriated on the lot. Uh, with, with, in my opinion, a modest 12-foot addition, yes, it will be adjacent to that dwelling, but, but as we saw from the support documents, that I submitted on the overhead map. There are other dwellings that have a similar length, as well as my friend at number 25, who, who is vastly over that 17 meter um, uh, building length that actually requested a variance before you today. We are at 15.24 meters. Your which time is, is up now. Two meters below the yeah. other side of the length. And I'm happy to answer any questions. We'll see if there are any. Panel members, um, any questions for the applicant? Now, members, this is a, just a reminder that you're making a decision based on the application the way it was submitted. Any opportunity for revisions should have been, been done in the original presentation. You can't do that in rebuttal. Thank you, Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer. Okay, then hearing no questions. So, sorry, sorry, Chair. Can I just uh, poke that a little bit? Um, I just want to be sure I understand. Uh, so. We are not allowed to approve uh, one, three, and four, and uh, refuse number two? Yes, the committee can make a split decision, but the application is being considered the way it is. 
it's not an amended application. Okay, great, thank you. Very good, okay. I understand there are no questions for the applicant. In that case, we'll take the application into committee for discussion, moving toward a motion. And who'd like to begin? Nope, I will start first. Please. Uh, so I kind of agree with the applicant that the numbers are quite minor. And again, surprisingly, it has a very strong impact to the neighborhood. But in this case, they have a laneway and it seems like the parking and perhaps the height is, the, is a bit more than what the neighbors can accept. So I, I'm honestly speaking, I'm still trying to review back and forth on the drawings. There are some inconsistency uh, among the drawings. Uh, so I'll just pick the one that matches with the variance to, to comment on. Uh, I think that's so far I can contribute to the panel. So are, are you saying, uh, Mr. Chang, that you're still considering your you're still still making up your yes. Still, still arriving that, at your. I just want to. I just want okay. to start the ball by okay. saying that uh, I, I find the numbers are quite normal and minor in nature, except the height and uh, the proximity to the laneway and how that development and the laneway uh, relationship is affecting the community. That's the angle I'm I'm reviewing now. I'll uh, perhaps I'll respond to that one because. You know, sometimes um, when individuals come to us and they say that the variance requested represents a 17% increase or a 27% increase, we ask them to, we, so we appreciate that, but what's the impact on you? So in this case, the numbers may be the other direction, being quite small, but now, what I'm thinking about is is the impact as I hear it described by um, very considered speakers one after another with respect to um, well I, I did hear the uh, the person who lives on the other side describe the impact on his property and that was persuasive to me and then all the comments I heard about the, the laneway and visibility, safety, and practicality of making that turn, those comments also resonated with me. So it's, even though the numbers, the, even though the, uh, the variances aren't large, their impact is such that um, I won't be supporting the application. Next speaker. Uh, Chair, maybe I'll go. Uh, so first off, um, I just wanted to thank all the, uh, the people that spoke. Your comments were very helpful and um, very insightful in helping us uh, understand the nature of some of these changes, uh, perhaps better than we could by just reading and seeing the material. Um, I was particularly uh, compelled by the discussion about laneway safety. Um, and I think someone mentioned in their comments that, you know, while it doesn't seem like a lot, just moving that uh, garage back to the setback line of half a meter would make a uh, considerable difference. And uh, uh, I, was, I was struck by that. I was going to talk to the applicant to see whether they would be open to uh, removing that uh, variance, and it sounds like they are. I, I find this is a bit of a tough one, just because if you look at the variance that they're asking for, uh, for the addition, it is really just FSI, and the amount of increase on FSI is frankly modest uh, in, in the context of what we see often, and particularly in an area that is a downtownish area close to the Danforth. Um, I, uh, 
I, I, I will admit I'm I'm kind of on the fence on this one. Um, I I understand the, the, the particularly the adjacent semi uh, owners' concern about sight lines, um, but it really is only a 12 foot uh, addition, which is modest in just about every neighborhood that we deal with. And I so I'm I'm struggling a little bit with um, the technical basis for refusing this one. So I. I'd like to hear uh, the rest of our colleagues' comments on this one as well. Um, okay, I'll chime in here. Um, just looking at the site statistics, just to, to feed off what the applicant said, um, they show the deck it would be 101 square feet. Um, so uh, in terms of assessing the impact of that with the extension. Um, I did go and visit um, the site um, and went in the back, you know, down the lane and down the back laneway. I um, I have concerns with. I would mirror some of the, uh, you know, concerns that were expressed with respect to um, safety and whether or not the difficulty in navigating um, that. T section of the laneway. Um, so I have would have some concerns with lessening um, any required setbacks that may um, further constrain the navigation of that uh, T intersection. With respect to the FSI, I too am struggling. It doesn't seem like a, a huge amount. Um, I was actually surprised when I went and visited the site that it wouldn't trigger a landscape variance, um, but um, as the applicant said, it went through zoning review, so it should have been caught up there. It is quite a small, uh, small lot, um, so I'm a little struggling with, with, uh, with it from, from that perspective, but those are my initial thoughts on with respect to the garage variances. Thank you. Mr. Byatt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I think it, uh, I, I think my colleagues have, uh, in, they were indicated very well that the sort of dilemma that you find yourselves in or we find ourselves in because there's a technical side, but I think, uh, Mr. Chair, you, uh, quite eloquently talked about the impact and I think that's a consideration as well that technically <clears throat> it may not uh, it may it may seem quite innocuous and fine but I think there's an impact that needs to be considered as well I was particularly uh, touched by the comments that the immediate neighbor the neighbor who shares the the semi uh, some of the comments that he had made. Um, I think the the developer of this property perhaps hasn't done themselves any favors by uh, not engaging adequately with uh, with the neighbor, the immediate neighbor, and generally listening to some of the other comments that have been made. So yeah, it's a it's a tough one. Well, Chair, uh, maybe I'll um, I'll tip my toe in the water and, and make a motion, and maybe that might help people um, turn their minds to this one. Um, I, I listening to us talk about this and reflecting on not only what we heard from the speakers that called in, but also I think we all read all the letters that were submitted, and it was a rather overwhelming. Um, response to uh, this application and I think we have to respect that when we're on the fence like we seem to be I think uh, deference should go to those who uh, are most immediately affected and particularly you know the owner of the adjacent semi um, and, 
Uh, so I'm going to move a motion to refuse this application. Is there a second? I will second that, Mr. Chair. Seconded by Mr. Bayad. It is moved and seconded to refuse the application. All those in favor of the motion, show of hands. And um, it is a unanimous, the motion is carried with a unanimous vote and the application is refused. And with that, the panel moves on to the next item. Going to have, we have, we'll be moving on to 22, 17 Galliad, but we do have to make a switch over once again. This is a technical thing. Please, everybody, just stand by. Hi, everybody. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we're going to be ending the stream in a moment and starting a new one. Um, you'll see that a similar titled stream will become available in a few moments. If you can still hear me, um, correction, we'll be going on with item number 21 on Bathurst Street. 